Hello everybody, um, with this short video we will introduce the Fiji software which is a Java based image viewer and we will go through some basic information which will help you during image analysis and processing. Fiji is, a, is an image processing package which is upgraded version of ImageJ including a lot of mostly biology related plugins uh, which facilitate scientific image analysis. So let me just open the software. Here we go. So this software itself is an open source tool, which is freely available um, and it can be easily installed and it is supported by Windows, Mac, Linux operating systems. When you install Fiji, it also subscribes you to certain web services, which allow you to update plugins and download some of the plugins that have been uh, generated by other users. Also, it offers comprehensive documentation and uh, automatic update function. So let's just look at the main window first. Up here, you see the menu. Then you see all the tool icons. And then down here is the status. If you would like to search for anything, then you have to type all your uh, query down here in this box and it will come up with the results. Okay, so let's start with the menu bar. In the menu bar, you find most of the functionalities such as loading the samples, uh, saving files, processing them, and all the plugins um, it will be installed into the menu bars. So let's just go through uh, each of them. First is the file. This mainly covers the file input and output, uh, how to save them, how to open them. The next, next section is edit. In the edit section, you will find all the selections and uh, the region of uh, interest handling. In the third bar is the image. Within this image, you find all the visualization and stack manipulation uh, buttons. Um, also how to adjust the brightness, the threshold, uh, lookup tables. Also it allows you to annotate, draw or edit your videos. In the process section, uh, it contains all the image filters um, that you may use during your analysis. In the analyze section, it's quite important. It contains all the information and uh, possibility to do the statistical analysis on your, on your images. You can also set the scale, um, look at the histogram, add, uh, use different tools um, and all the other uh, uh, useful uh, plugins down here. The next one is plugins itself. Uh, it contains all the plugins, macros and utilities that you may wish to use during your analysis. In the windows, you will find options to handle your windows uh, within the Fiji software. And the last one is help, where you find all the help and links and further information that if you if you need more. The toolbar mostly contains selection tools, as you can see down here. Um, some of these are rectangle, oval, polygon, freehand, or the straight line. Now, by clicking on the icon, you activate them. Some of the tools also offer option dialogues, which you can open by double clicking on it. For example, here I double click the straight segment or freehand lines and I have an option to choose which width the line I would like to work with. If there is a small red arrow in the, in the lower right corner of the tool icon, you can right click and then you can select alternative selection tools. For example, here you can, uh, you can choose over selection, elliptical selection or you can go to uh, brush tools. The status bar uh, displays very useful information at the start and also when running, uh, running plugins. And it also shows a progress bar on the right side 
uh, for run, run, long running processes. So let's just open up um, a sample, open the samples and we open up uh, the blobs down here. So a single click uh, on a status bar uh, show the information about the image J and also the Java version as well as also the memory consumption uh, when this image is opened. In a status bar there is also a search tool. Some of the menus in Fiji are quite large and so remembering where the tool you want is located can be difficult at some times and so typing in here should find the tool or plugin that you are looking for uh, and it provides a shortcut for run. So for example I'm looking for the scale bar. Uh, it comes up with that option and if you hit run that will uh, put the scale bar on. But we're going to talk about that uh, more in more detail a little bit later. Opening up images. Fiji primarily uses TIFF as an image file format. So when you click on file and save, you primarily save your images in TIFF format. When you open them up, again, it will search for TIFF images, but it can also import a number of other common file formats such as JPEG, GIF, BMP, PGM or PNG. To open up a file, you can also drag them and drop them into the toolbar such as that and it will open up your images. Many more file formats can be imported via Fiji plugins. One plugin is called the BioFormats. This will import and export a wide number of file formats along with their important metadata including files from Zeiss Zen, Leica LSX and uh, Nikon Elements. You will not need to worry about this plugin to import your data because BioFormat is largely integrated with the file open command of the Fiji. However, for certain file formats, you may wish to explicitly activate the BioFormat importer to override the default behavior of the Fiji software. So if BioFormat is used, you will be prompted with a big dialogue and your preferences are usually remembered. So, for example, if I go on File, Open, and open up an image, immediately I get the Bioformat Import options. And in here you have quite a lot of options uh, how you would like to open up your images. Every time you hover your mouse over um, a box, on the right side, in this window, it will give you information um, and guidance whether you would like to tick that box or not. For example, in here, um, split into separate windows, I clicked split channels. So I would like to open up my images that all the three channels are split in different windows. And I click OK. And I have all my three channels are separated here. Whenever you open up an image, uh, be it like a uh, file open, file open, or um, open samples or with a drag and drop, the image will open up an image window as you can see down here. Let me just close um, two of them and uh, have this one here. So this window has a file name as a title and it displays some useful information above, uh, above the image. When you move your mouse over the image, you get the coordinates uh, where your mouse is relative to the image and you also get a value which is changes when you move the mouse. And this is between zero and two, uh, 255 if it is a eight bit image. And if you see, uh, if you move the mouse, you see this value changing. Further information is displayed in the image window uh, where you can see the real resolution if the scale bar is set. If not, then you see the pixel resolution, you see the image type, and also the memory is required by the image. Okay, so let's open up a multi-channel image. So we close that window and I go on file, open samples and open fluorescent cells. Here we go. So this image will uh, open with the channel bar along the bottom, as you can see down here in this image. But this is displayed as composite mode. So even though there are three positions, one for each channel with the color displayed under the title. 
uh, this image is a composite so all channels are displayed together to split the channels you go on image color and the channel tools and that opens up this channel window and in here you can choose the color and if you choose that then the image is still display, uh, displayed as a color for uh, default mode so there are still three positions one for each channel along the bottom however this time only the selected channels uh, will be display, displayed if you would like to change uh, the um, brightness and contrast in any of the channels you stay on a channel that would you like to change and then you go on image adjust brightness and contrast and that opens up the window that helps you to to do that this brightness and contrast window can also be opened by a different route where you click on shift c uh, and it immediately opens up so the line graph at the top of the window which is superimposed on the images histogram shows how many uh, how the pixel values are mapped to 8 bit between 0 and 255 these two numbers um, these two numbers um, under the plot are the minimum and the maximum display pixel values and these two values define the display range or the window pixels with value less than a minimum are displayed as black and those with a value greater than the maximum are displayed as white if you click on auto the image g will automatically optimize brightness and contrast based on an analysis of the images histogram if you click on reset it will restore the original brightness and contrast settings if you click on set then you need to enter the minimum and maximum display range values in a dialog box and then click ok and if you click apply that will apply the current display range mapping function to the pixel data okay now i'll show you how to set the scale bar most raw data images from our microscopes are pre-calibrated in micrometers per pixel as can be seen in the information bar uh, on the image window if you have data from a manual microscope without any calibration, you can set the calibration so that your subsequent data aren't measured in pixels, like in here, but you can measure it per micron. This requires an image taken with a microscope calibration slide using the same microscope and objective as your image data sets. So let's open up an image with a scale bar on. Open the samples and we open up a leaf. Now this leaf was taken with a ruler on top so we know exactly uh, uh, the distances on this image so what you have to do is click on the straight line tool and define the known distance on your calibration image let's say we set five millimeter like so next you go into analyze menu and then you select set, set skill and the dialog window will open now the distance in pixels it will be filled in for you based on the length of the line you drew before and so what you need to do is fill the known distance in this case we had five millimeters so you you fill it without the units define the units of length in the unit of length window and we put in millimeters and you click on the global so that this calibration applies to all images that you open in this image j session and then you click ok note that for the micrometers you can either type um or micron now this work that i just showed you is only required if the images aren't pre-calibrated by the acquisition software if they are if they are you can just start from this point and you add the scale bar to your data so what you do is you open the image you want to add the scale bar we're just gonna work with the same image and we go into analyze tools and we go on scale bar and the scale bar dialog window opens and you have you can adjust uh, the pixel size the font size you can adjust the uh, color the background 
or also the location where you would like to put the scale bar and I would like to have it in a lower right. I would like to have it in black uh, and then I click OK and the uh, scale bar is already, already been set on my image. Okay, now we talk about the lookup tables. First of all, I close that and don't save it and I open up the image of fluorescent cells. Now make sure that the images are not composite but color, right? So each channel can be assigned to different colors or also to range of colors if you want to study intensities. First of all, you select the channel that you would like to change and then you go on image, look up tables and for instance, in here on this channel, I would like to change it into magenta. And the next, which was originally green, I can change it into whichever I would like to choose, for example, fire. And then I leave the DAPI as it is. Now, multi-channel images cannot be imported into PowerPoint, Word or Illustrator. They have to be converted to RGB format. And for this, use the channel tool windows. Um, so in composite mode, um, sorry, I just closed it. So in channel tools and we go on composite mode. Then select the channels that you would like to uh, display when you save it. For example, I want to save channel one and channel three as an image like that. So I click on more and then I choose convert to RGB. Now this will create a new window in 8-bit RGB format and that can be used in PowerPoint and other uh, presentation software. So for this I need to save that and I go on file, save as uh, and I save it as TIFF as it should be. I'll save that. Um, and you have to use this um, uh, this file for presentation purposes. To copy and paste, you can uh, you can click on edit, copy to system, and straight away uh, you can uh, place that image into PowerPoint or uh, or any other um, presentations. So, for example, in here, and I paste it into the PowerPoint presentation. Um, 